Hey guys, I'm Elena, an expat living and working in Ukraine. In my vlogs, I usually talk about my own experiences, but Ukraine is home to so many expats from all over the world. Some of them come here to study, others to work, others to travel or retire. Regardless, each one of them has their own unique story. So in this new video, interview with an expat, I'm going to talk to foreigners from all around the world who have settled in Ukraine and ask them the quintessential question, why Ukraine? Today I am uh, with Michael. Michael is an American living in Odessa for the last five years. He has a very successful career in IT. He is also very passionate about ballet and his Instagram page is full of videos from the Opera and Ballet Theater in Odessa. And finally he has the cutest dog. Michael, <laughs> thank you so much for uh, oh, accepting the invitation. Tell us a little bit more about yourself. I uh, was born and raised in Northern California in what was to become Silicon Valley back and when I was young, it was agricultural. It was very different, right? So I lived there my whole life, worked in IT for 25 years, still work in IT. Uh, had three kids. Three kids all work in IT. They all live in New York City. Uh, what <laughs> great else? intro. No, that's a great intro. I know that you're an avid traveler. You have been to 53 countries, yes. which is an impressive list. And to some of them, you have been repeatedly. So you've, you've traveled a lot. Yeah. Why of all the countries in the world you have chosen Odessa to settle, you know, for the last five years? Yeah. Uh, I tell people it's like a California beach town. It's a lot like maybe Santa Barbara, except that it gets cold in the winter. Uh, it's got great beaches. Uh, again, I've been 53 countries. I've been some places like Thailand 25 times. I would challenge you to go to another place that has more to offer for, uh, you know, very uh, reasonable prices. If you could point out like two or three things that you really enjoyed about Odessa, maybe in comparison to Lviv and Kiev, because a lot of foreigners, they also ask like, hey, there are three big cities in Ukraine, where should I settle? Yeah. What are the pros of Odessa compared to Lviv or Kiev? Well, they have the Black Sea. That's a, that's a, <laughs> that's a big one. Uh, it depends on what you like to do. I like, I like the beaches. I like to swim in the summer. So Lviv is a great little place. I, I personally would get a little bored there. I don't think there's as much to do. Again, you have the great opera house, you have a lot of great restaurants. It's big enough where you can do a lot of activity. There's a lot of things to do day or night, but it's small enough that if you just want to hang around in your local area, I happen to be in the center, you know, it's pretty casual. So it has a good mix. Uh, I know that it's been a while, but could you go back uh, when you just arrived to Odessa for the first time five years ago and tell us about your first impressions about the city? Honestly, I thought it might be a little dangerous. Probably a lot of Westerners have that uh, that feeling, but I, I don't find it that at all. I find the men here are very courteous. Obviously, didn't know where to go, didn't know the restaurants, didn't know how a lot of things work here. You do have to. A lot of guys come to find women in you know a week or two, and it's just not going to work really. You need to come and live here and be part of the the society and the culture, it's a much different experience. Let's go back to your passion for ballet. Yeah. Uh, were you always so passionate about going to performances or is no. it something because we have such a wonderful opera and ballet theater here in Odessa? No, I, I went uh, maybe once a year for a few years because my ex-wife insisted we go see the Nutcracker at Christmas. Uh -huh. That was it. But since I live right across the street from this uh, and I start watching, they're, they're really great athletes and it's very beautiful. So where do you get to combine grace and beauty in, in a sport kind of thing? You know, I, so I've just been fascinated with it. I've gotten to know a lot of the dancers and performers and because uh, I video so much, there's 12,000 posts on my Instagram. So uh, I just really got a passion for it. I, I'm athletic, I've always been an athlete and to watch them perform is, is amazing. So Yeah guys, follow Michael on his Instagram. He has some amazing videos. No, I'm saying this honestly, I was super impressed by the quality of the films and like just, it's just so beautiful. I, I'll post it here on the page and feel free to follow Michael.
Hello. Thank you so much for having us. Show us the apartment. Okay. Court closet. Uh, it's a small one bedroom place. It's not, not too bad though. My uh, bathroom, got a sauna in there, which is a little bit unusual, pretty big sauna. Do you use it? <laughs> I don't use it. I use What's it for storage. It's storage. I have a lot of different foreign guys who when they visit, they leave an extra bag. So I have a whole bunch of guys in there, maybe five, not guys, but bags. <laughs> So, uh, the, uh, I don't know what you call it, kitchen, living, kind of, I don't really use the table much because I don't cook much. Oh. I don't cook much at all. I eat a lot of stuff that's prepared or restaurants or whatever it is. Eat light. I got a lot of American snacks, though. My friend loads me up with all these goodies that you can't get here in Ukraine. Ritz crackers, premiums. Look at it. Have you ever had one of these? Poop, Tootsie Pop? Yeah. You've had I call one? them Chupa Chups. No, no, these are different. You don't ah. get them here. So that's one of the oldest candies in America. It's a Tootsie Roll, or Tootsie Pop. Inside it has Tootsie Roll candy. You see I have the flag of the Odessa. Uh -huh. I also have a signed Michael Jordan jersey up there. Nice. It's a little memorabilia. My daughter's stuff, this is, she graduated with real big honors at UCLA. She was a Sigma, Sigma Cum Laude, perfect grade. So. And I have a lot of sneakers, you can see. I have about 35 pairs of sneakers, I think. I like sneakers. Uh, my little animal friend, Bug. Hello, buddy. Who's that? <laughs> Tell us a little bit about the cost of living, because I feel that's one of the first questions the foreigner asks when they have to move to another country. Yeah, and yeah, I think not just that, too, because I talk to a lot of guys who are thinking about it, and they're sort of trepidatious or concerned about moving and making a big change and the cost of living, can they afford it? So this place is about $400 a month. Well, it is $400 a month, and it's inclusive of air and heating and uh, water and security and everything else so you know there's a big community here of foreign guys so I know a lot of them a lot of Americans there are guys who are living on eight hundred dollars a month mm -hmm. and a few guys living on a thousand dollars a month you can live really comfortably on two thousand dollars a month and most guys could manage that with a pension or whatever they have you know their savings so for that yeah you, I mean that's going out having good entertainment and going to the opera and everything mm -hmm. else the ballet so uh, you could be pretty active all of the amenities are included in the $400 per In mind, month. yeah. It's not mm -hmm. typical. Usually it's an extra charge. I mean, you probably you know it's $100 or so for heating. And right. Heating. Your apartment, in terms of price and what it offers, is a steal. How did you get it? Another foreign guy had this and he was moving out of the country. So he, that office, that door next door is this guy's office. He has a big office. And he just introduced me and said, he like foreign guys to be in his apartment. So he said yes. And there was no... The handshake, that was it. There was no contract or anything else. I've been here for, I think, almost four years. Most of the time, order takeout, eat out, in restaurants? I eat out. I, I eat light a lot. I, I like a big lunch. I'll go out and eat a big lunch or something. At night, I don't eat a lot, just a little bit. Uh, he's spoiled. He only likes restaurant foods. <laughs> <laughs> he likes to go out. Uh, so, on average, how much do you spend on food, let's say, per month? Um, including going out to eat? Yeah. $500, I mean, you could mm -hmm. certainly economize. You could spend $1,000, it depends on how extravagant you're getting for dinners, and especially if you're drinking, you know, it's gonna mm -hmm. be a lot more, but still it's ridiculously cheap prices compared to the US to go out. So let's um, maybe give the, the, our viewers an example of what would uh, a lunch for one person cost you in Odessa? Yeah, it depends. We, a lot of us like to go to this uh, restaurant called Haji Bay. It's a very popular local place. It's Uzbekistani food. Uh, they call it uh, Crimean Tatar, but it's, it's you know Middle Eastern mm -hmm. type food. And we always joke. We the big joke is when the bill comes, we guess what the total is, and we go out there and eat a lot of food and drink a you know a bottle of wine or something, and it'll almost always come down to about ten dollars a person mm -hmm. for good restaurant food and you know decent wine. And uh, uh, you can go out. Last night we went out and spent. I think 500 grivna, which is about $20, right? I know you live in the city center and everything is basically here. Do you have any cost of transportation and could you give any advice on that in terms of how much I don't have costs? a car. Most everybody here does not have a car. One foreign guy has a car. He doesn't use it that much. You don't need it. I mean, there's decent public transport. I'm in the center. I walk everywhere, so that, that works. But if you last night we went out to a place that was a little further away. Uh, four dollars to ride Uber, so mm -hmm. Uber takes you everywhere. There's lots of drivers, so it's transportation is not an issue at all. It's no secret.
secret that a lot of men come to Ukraine to find a, a wife or a girlfriend or for a relationship, either a short term or a meaningful one. Um, you are uh, single at the moment and you were single when you arrived to Odessa. Okay. What's your experience my dating experience has, here? My experience has been really good, but I, I might say that that's not the norm. Uh huh. Well, why is that? I think everybody comes here to find women, right? They don't admit it, some of them, but I think they really do. Uh, because Eastern Europe, Eastern Europe has a, a higher ratio of women to men. That's pretty well, you can go Google it and, look, and find that. So there's a lot here. I think they start out on the dating sites back in the U.S. or England or wherever they are and uh, get a feel for the women here. But I, I think that's not, it's not uh, reality. Mm -hmm. So they come here with misconceptions and wrong ideas and uh, they're not realistic about a lot of things. I know that a lot of men use this so-called agencies to find somebody here, then they come, they have, well, an experience, usually not the best one. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you find somebody to date here? Like, what's well, your strategy? I have used an agency. In fact, I dated a girl for two years through an agency, but it was sort of a different. It just did. No letter writing. I would suggest don't chat, don't write letters. That's nonsense. It's a business here, right? Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of women who work the business because there's not a lot of jobs. So you really have to come and live here and be part of the society and meet people. I meet people all the time just being out, being mm -hmm. active. I presume you have many male friends here and, or like acquaintances, let's say. Yeah. And when they come here to Odessa and ask you about, oh, you know, how do I find a date? What do you recommend? I tell them not to use the dating sites. But so many of them are enthralled with beautiful young women, you know, they're going to date 20-year-old women or 22. Yes, you know, that's just re really ridiculous, mm -hmm. right? It's, uh, but they, they can't get it out of their mind. So uh, I, I think you really need to just be active and, mm -hmm. and meet people and, you know, in your normal daily life. Right. What would be a good place to, um, you know, meet a, a young coffee, woman? Coffee houses, there's a lot of them. Uh, I don't really go out at night. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think that that's a great, uh, if you're looking to find a relationship, you know, <laughs> Yeah. I don't think it's particularly good. Restaurants and coffee places, the gym, the beach, mm -hmm. uh, just walking around, you know, there's always lots of people and there's, there is a tremendous preponderance of beautiful women in Odessa, no question about that. What would you think are the differences in the style of dating and what things are admissible and permissible here on yeah. dates and generally? Well, really, in, in my opinion, uh, it, here is like uh, California was 50 years ago mm -hmm. or 40 years ago, right? Uh, the women are different. The culture is different. Uh, women want to be women and they expect their men to be men. Mm -hmm. That's not really the, a strong concept in Northern California or in the United States with the woke mm -hmm. culture now, right? This is very different. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot more traditional. Mm -hmm. In the sense that you would be expected to cover the bill of the date, any yeah. other things yeah. that people need to know like about the style of dating? Because it's not common in all of the countries, right, to um, pay the bill for the woman. Sometimes you do split the bill. I personally believe you need to, if you're mm -hmm. taking a woman out for anything, you need to pay for that. Okay. And I think they generally expect that. Yeah. Again, you need to, you <laughs> need to make sure who you're going out with right. and where you're going. Because mm -hmm. there's a lot of restaurants that pad the bill and they charge all sorts of extra commissions. And, right. So. Tell me about that. So, uh, unfortunately, Odessa has also been, you know, getting this reputation of being a scam city. Mm -hmm. There are some places that are going to charge you extra just because you're a foreigner, like yeah. a lot extra. Yeah. How do you avoid those situations? You can go on TripAdvisor and other places and, and uh, they'll warn you about certain places. There are mm -hmm. definitely some places that are notorious. But even nice restaurants that I like, if a, a Ukrainian woman takes a guy in there, a foreign guy in there, uh, they're going to expect him to pay the bill and, and uh, they will pay these girls a commission, mm -hmm. right? That's business. I don't, I don't, when I first was here, I had a problem with that. I thought it was, oh, it was horrible, but the guys need to be realistic and understand and intelligent and uh, they won't have any issues, right? Mm -hmm. But they will pay girls commissions. So you want to make sure this is a real date to somebody who's really interested in you and mm -hmm. you are interested in them and not just some hot 20 year old girl, right? Right. It's a big difference. Let's say you go to a fancy restaurant. What is the realistic price for two with, you know, wine or bubbly or champagne? Uh, $50. Per, per, uh, together. Together, uh -huh. maybe a hundred dollars tops. Mm -hmm. You know, in San Francisco, it'd be three, four, five hundred dollars, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but you can do it definitely a lot less. It depends on which restaurant you go to mm -hmm. and what you're ordering. 
right. So if it's like much more than that, that's a red alert that something oh, is yeah. happening. Yeah, yeah, and I've, I've had guys tell me stories. In fact, I was with a table of guys and I warned them about these women they were with because I knew who they were oh. and they let them order. And so I didn't have any of their stuff. And when the bill came, it was $2,000. And oh I God. picked up my phone and I laughed and I walked out, right? Because I didn't have any of that. So I told them, I warned them, but that's what happened. Oh, yeah. Obviously, you don't recommend dating somebody who is super young, like in their 20s. But what about your relationships? What, how big has the age gap been? And do you think it affects women in Ukraine and like what is normal here? Well, definitely the, the age gap, the age difference is much more acceptable here. If you're a nice guy and you have a decent income and can provide a good life, there's, there's a small percentage of guys who can do that here, I mm -hmm. think, really. I had a girlfriend who was 23. Mm -hmm. Huge age difference, right? Most of the girls I date are in 30 mm -hmm. or early 30s. Again, a big, big age difference, yeah. but I have a lot of energy. I'm very active. Um, I know a lot of people. I have a cute dog. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's a magnet. So again, I just, I just try to see somebody who's compatible, somebody who enjoys life like I do. I don't even think about it. But it, again, it depends on the guys. There's a lot of old guys who come here, older guys, and they're not in good shape. And, you know, that's going to be more of a difference, right? Because they're mm -hmm. not going to be very active. So it really depends on the guy. Well, Michael, thank you so much for giving this amazing advice and talking about your own experience. I really think it's super unique and super insightful. So uh, if anybody has any questions for Michael, please feel free to comment in the comments and I'll pass the questions to Michael and get an answer for you. But otherwise, like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye, guys. Bye.